friends and fans, this is Karma Lately and today we are going to get ready with me to make art. And so if you want to see the kinds of tools that I use that you can find at home and some of the materials as well that are lying in your kitchen or inside your miscellaneous drawer, uh, keep watching. The first thing that uh, I like to focus on when um, creating any kind of art project. The first, first thing is my mindset. Um, I will see a YouTube video and I might get inspired or I might learn how to do something and want to recreate it. And sometimes when you see someone create something so perfectly and so uh, flawlessly, you question, well, this is my first time doing it, it's not gonna come out well. I want to give you guys a little heads up. If you haven't seen my first videos or any of my videos, I really don't have that many yet. But if you take a look at some of my videos, all of my, most of my videos, a lot of the things that I'm doing, um, I'm applying new techniques. I'm experimenting, sometimes even trying for the first time. So even when I learn something on YouTube, I try to put a spin on it and make it my own, experiment, find out how I can make it better or how I make, can make it easier or simply I challenge myself not to have to go outside and purchase materials and work with what I have at home and try to create whatever it is that they're doing with the tools that I have at home. So, so I feel like when you're approaching an art piece, don't worry so much about making it exactly how the person that you learned from you know like don't worry about doing it the way they did it focus more on giving it your own spin but learning the actual basics of how to make it um, and I think that helps us in not being so um, worried about what the outcome is going to be and we have fears in all our, our lives you know, when you're in school, you have fear of the first day of school, failing a test, meeting a new girl or a new boy, um, getting in trouble. There's always some sort of fear. Um, starting a new career, getting married, starting a family, starting a dream job. We have fear because we're afraid of what the outcome is going to be. We're afraid that the outcome isn't going to be what we want or what we expect because we've already experienced not having the outcomes that we want. So we're afraid. We're afraid of failing again, or we're afraid of losing again, or whatever the case is. I hope that with my channel and this new mindset of just taking risks and not being afraid of trying something new and not being afraid of failing at it. You know, you look at some of my videos and all of my videos and I could point out five mistakes editing wise, um, speech wise, and more importantly artistically there are mistakes coming out the wazoo. Um, but I post them, I post them because it's my rendition of the art piece and I had a great time doing it and I'm encouraging you to not worry so much about the mistakes but to have fun and try it. So that's the first tip. Traditional tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need scissors, you're going to need a craft knife, you're going to need glue, different types of glue, a glue gun. There's so many different little tools that you probably should have, a stapler, whatever it is, you should have it at home. But then there's some of these other um, tools that we don't pay attention to, but we already have uh, in, our beauty, in our beauty supply at home. So for example, a nail filer. A nail filer for me comes in handy when I'm doing my miniature projects that involve glue, um, sorry, wood. So for example, this piece of balsa wood, um, down with this so that's a beauty product this little smoky eye uh, eye brush I also use this for some of my wood dowels if I want to paint or if I want to put glue 
I just always make sure to wash it right after because you don't want your tool to be um, to harden but that's another one I've used this uh, eyebrow spool not only to paint tiny things to dig in and uh, maybe put glue into something that was small that needed like a you know like a small crevice you put glue Another cool thing to have, especially when you're working with small things, is um, these clips. These clips are great because they have these little swivel things here. And so let's say I wanted to glue these two pieces. I take these, put one on top of the other, and then I use my clip. Sorry, I'm not doing such a great job. I use my clip. Now it's sealed together and I can put it off to the side and have it glue. I'm sorry, have it adhere. Another cool beauty tool, forgot about, um, this uh, tweezer. And for tweezers, it's very simple. When I'm trying to pick these small pieces of um, wood or anything that's like that you need to have a secure because it's so small you want to make sure that you're able to grab it put it somewhere that you need it to be glued whatever the case tools like that this yoohoo um, glue is really really great it is all-purpose it is strong um, I've used it on everything from wood, metal, plastics, um, fabric, paper. I've used this for everything and it it dries clear and I love it. Um, there's another tool that is not always spoken about, this pin vise. Um, when you're working with uh, doll houses, you're repairing your doll house, doll house miniatures, although I don't have to say this to professional miniatures who are out there. Uh, making masterpieces but for some of the beginners and um, people who wonder how did you manage to do that um, you get your pin vise and it comes with different drill bits uh, different sizes depending on what size you're trying to um, depending on what size you're trying to drill but those are really those come in handy I've, I've used those quite a bit. I also have a lot of these like these kind of things. This one is double sided. I got it at Michael's. Um, this one is one sided. I use this one a lot for my dollhouse miniatures and I use this one a lot for my dolls. So um, I make posable dolls. Um, I used to make them from yarn. Here's my yarn. I used to make my dolls from yarn. I could show you one of those dolls in a little bit. Um, now I make them from fabric. Um, this is some wire that you can use for doll making. And I also have just all of my fabric. And it is important to have your stuff organized because um, you don't want to create too many problems when you're creating art. This is another cool tool. Um, this is actually a plaque remover and I've used it for like stuffing, um, doing the stuffing for the dolls and just different things, turning out pieces and stuff of that nature. And also have this pill bottle full of jewelry pieces and someone might say well what is all of that I save jewelry pieces that are no longer in function whether it's I lost the earring or the um, the necklace busted or whatever the case I save those because those can be used for something else. For example, this 
was part of a necklace. And as you can see, it looks like a like a fancy medieval cup. Sorry about that. Looks like an, a medieval cup. All I would have to do is maybe put a little bit of um, hot glue right here to seal the bottom and the top is fine. You could also use it as a pottery for your dollhouse. Just put like a little plant in there and now you have this pretty pot. There's a lot that you can do with these um, jewelry findings. Actually, I want to show you a piece that I made over 20 years ago. I still have it. It's not in mint condition. It's a little bent up, but um, I made it using that principle. It was meant to be a chandelier. These are um, paper clips. Sorry about that. These are paper clips. The green, these uh, green ones here. And then these top parts, they're meant to be, these jewelry findings, they're meant to be the candle holder. Um, this middle piece, this like uh, olive green, that's a bead. And I glued it right in the center there. This top part here, this is another jewelry finding. And this is a gold trim. You can, you can find these at like uh, fabric stores. It's a, it's a gold trim, like a beaded gold trim. And then the base is this cool jewelry piece that I added these two gold pieces to to kind of like make the, the light bulb, the light bulbs. And so that is, I mean, it's old and it was my first attempt at something like this. Um, so it's not perfect. It also got bent up over time. So I still have to, I'm very gentle with this when I do restore it. I want to be very careful with it because I would like to use the same pieces. But um, it's just to give you an idea of what you can do with the jewelry that you have at home. I'm all about using what we have to make something. So we're gonna delve right, since I already moved into that part of the conversation, we're gonna delve right into um, the findings that you have at home. So this was, so this was cool. some sort of like jack to put, like I think it was for her headphones or something. And um, I believe with some of the pieces that I have here, so I have I have this bead and I have an earbud and it looks like a, it looks like a hair dryer. Now I can also I have another piece. This is another earbud. Um, That looks like a, it literally looks like a hair dryer. Like, so this, actually, this came from headphones. Um, they were like these uh, Bluetooth headphones my daughter had and they got messed up and she was gonna throw them away and I was like, what the heck is that? I was like, that looks like something that you can drink from. Like a, like a canister or something. So I save stuff like that. This is a perfume, uh, this is a perfume, like the perfume pump. And this, I have no idea what this is. I saw it and I thought it was, it would make for a good lid or something. And so now I'm gonna take this perfume thing, put it upside down. And now I just made a stock pot for your dollhouse. <laughs> now this, you have to be careful of the scales. Um, when I, what I mean by scales is the size. So that would be the good, a good size for the collector scale. It would not be a good size pot for Barbie scale. Um, 
so you do you do have to be careful of the scale same as this like this is from your pizzeria when you get your pizza um but this is not this is like an in-between scale so it could work as a very low coffee table in the collector scale the one inch equals a foot but it's even small for that um, but you can you can utilize it you can still utilize it it's, it's still a little bit it's a little bit small um, another thing I like to do we love board games in my home and so we have a lot of board games there's some that are old there's some that we don't use anymore and so I ask permission sometimes um, but for example this chess game we we love chess we got a new chess game and so we don't really need this this is a, a, the, these are old but you know how your the dollhouse beds have you seen like these amazing miniaturists and they carve these like head posts and they're amazing well I mean this looks like a head post this looks like one. These look like head posts. Even the pawns. So you could potentially have like a dowel and then glue this on top and make it a headboard. Um, these are leg tips. Uh, for your chair to protect your chair so that it doesn't scratch the floor and I think I have a loose one here I have many uses for this um, the first thing I was thinking of was like a small barrel another thing I was thinking about was painting this and giving it like a, a pottery feel or actually putting clay on this to give it that terracotta feel and then putting pots in here um, also if you flip it it has this top so I was thinking of putting a bottom here from one of my plastic finds maybe not this but something like this right and now having this little this could go well in like a garden putting a plant on top of this and maybe decorating this painting this um, I feel like with ingenuity so I I really um, so for this one gave like all my jewelry bottles I I don't throw them away I um, I use them to organize my beads I use containers um, there were vitamins in here and now I have this thing called prettiest beads which it's my emptiest one I guess I used all the pretty beads already I love the idea of creating with what I have at home and so it brings me to the next point um, I know I've made quite a few points since my last point but it brings me to another point which is that number one art helps us to problem solve and so people say well what do you mean problem solve what are artists solving We'll say, for example, a simple canvas. You have a canvas and you want to paint it. So the canvas has no problem right now. But now, by throwing paint onto the canvas, you've created a problem. How do you solve it? It's by forming something onto that canvas. Something useful, something inspiring, something imaginative, something creative, and making that's the solution. 
art is the solution. Um, so using art, art actually develops, this is scientifically proven, art develops the right side of your brain to help the left side of your brain. So it literally supports, your right side supports mathematicians, um, scientists. It's the reason why at Google, they require a certain percentage of their week to go towards going into the Lego room and working on art. I don't know if they still do that, but um, it's because a lot of great ideas come from building on that artistic, creative process. Um, I was talking about the yarn, and so some of the things that I've done with yarn are these um, yarn dolls. And I can tell you everything that this doll has, she's made with wire, she's made with yarn. This is all um, upcycled fabrics. This is from jeans, this is from a shirt. Um, her feet, her shoes are made of yarn and her hair is made of yarn. Um, her face is with fabric and I painted it with acrylic. I also made this uh, many moons ago. Um, I made this out of, this is the wrapping, this is the, the stuffing that they use to protect, say they're going to send you a computer or electronic, they send this to protect your package. Well, I cut it up and made this. I used some fabric that I had from a curtain and some more foam, a different kind of foam for the seats, cushions, and glue. And I made this. I made this with some wooden dowels. The bottom parts here, these four pieces, those are beads. And the fabric were old pants that I wanted to get rid of, but I didn't want to throw away. And also some more of that um, foam for the seat cushion, some glue, and voila. This is actually popsicle sticks that I carved and um, painted and then shellacked. So from the iPhone case I made, and some of you have seen this um, tutorial, I made a fridge and it was a lot of fun making so much fun making. Um, I'm just showing you guys from the stuff that you have at home all the things that you can find tutorials for to make. But the other point is having your tools, having the knowledge is half the battle of achieving what it is that you wanted to achieve. So if you're trying to make a paper flower, I made this, by the way, from uh, a shopping bag. So you want to make a paper flower. Cool. Why don't you find out the tools that you need? And if you have the tools at home, that's half the battle. The next part of it is figuring out the process, following the directions. Is it going to come out great? No. First of all, this is, this is mediocre at best. Look, there's creases everywhere because I made it from a shopping bag. So is it perfect? No, but I had so much fun doing it. And I feel proud because I, didn't, I haven't seen a flower like this. It's made with a shopping bag. My flower has creases and yours is perfect. I followed a tutorial online and I didn't, I had poster board, but I had, I didn't have enough poster board to do everything that they were doing. And so I had to mix and match poster board. And I ended up making this flower, it's a giant flower. <laughs> I ended up making this flower from green, white, and yellow poster board that I had as scraps at home. But I have the tools. You just have to have a little bit of, sometimes we get so caught up and we're like, but I don't have supplies, I don't, you do have supplies. We all have supplies. We have stuff at home. Unless you're a minimalist. I know that some minimalists don't have too much at home, but we do have supplies. You don't want to become a hoarder. Um, I do try to keep all my stuff organized and save. I don't save everything, but I know if that if I can repurpose it, then I'm gonna hold on to it. And there's something in every corner. 
I um, was going to use this for my daughter's sweet 16, but I couldn't find them. Um, these, this is an actual gift box. Um, let's see if I can show you guys. So you know, the gift box for Christmas. Well, I drew a pattern out of paper. I haven't even passed it on to pattern paper yet, but I drew a pattern and I ended up making a whole bunch of these. These were gonna be for my daughter's 316. But look at this. You can put this on a wall, you can decorate, put this on a wall somewhere. And people would have thought you bought it and you made it yourself. So I also wanna show you guys really quickly um, some of the stuff that I have been able to do with a room box. If you don't have the time or the energy to make a miniature dollhouse, you can also make a room box. I'm gonna Let's show you. First, how. talk about this room box. Um, this is wood, and I basically had three pieces of wood: this one, this one, and this bottom one. This, these are popsicle stick floors, which I have. Um, a tutorial for that and uh, that's a robot this is the scientist this was actually my daughter who um, decided to create this bedroom for her characters for her show and she used my dolls to do so she also created from Legos she created this gadget for her scientist doll um, she used one of the TVs that I made out of a uh, calculator she used that and we took the posters, that's from magazines, and we just put it on the, um, we put it on the, on the wall there. And uh, my mom crocheted this for me and we used it as a rug. And I can literally give him anything. I can put anything in his hand and it's, and it's gonna look, and it's gonna look like it has some sort of purpose that he's using it for see that I can I can put these are some of the things that um, that I have lying around that I believe can be all repurposed Creating some sort of concoction some sort of gadget but see this is um, this is uh, blackboard paint, it's, uh, chalk, chalk paint. I painted it, I'm sorry, chalkboard paint. Painted it black right on the wood, and then my daughter drew an actual um, uh, algebraic problem. Um, I made these vines, these venations from beads, string, and wood. They haven't been applied to the windows yet because the windows are not there yet, but I made those. Um, the bed, it really isn't a bed. It's really just a mattress that I had made. Um, this wood, and I attached these little wood. So it's like a low bed, like a low thing there. This, and so he's, this is my daughter's uh, character and she's a robot and that's the scientist. Um, by the way, like I said, this TV I made from a calculator. You can see the back, the nails on all four corners. You can see that's a calculator. And she put all of these, which I thought she was really clever for doing, she put all these Lego pieces in here but this is just a, um, a little box this is uh, a box that I think one of her like headphones came in with her iPhone uh, she's gonna kill me because I'm destroying her room here but 
how do you get ready for art? You have to have the tools, you have to have the mindset, and you have to have the creativity and the ingenuity to find things in your home to repurpose and to create. Not everything is to purchase. We're helping the planet by not creating more garbage and not getting rid of so much garbage by repurposing the things that we already have. And so that's how you get ready with me for art. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really, really do want to see the projects that you guys come up with. Stay tuned for the next project that I do. I really have no clue what it's going to be, but I'm excited to share it with you. Blessings and thank you guys for watching.